And something happened to me over those 21 days that changed my life forever. I had an experience with God in my bedroom alone where literally I felt the presence of God come into my room and it was better than any molly I'd have never popped. It was better than any kush I'd have never smoked. It was better than any sex I'd have never had. And from that day, it was like something changed, bro. Like seriously, something changed in my life. It was like, God is real. If God is real, what am I doing with my life? If God is real and I'm wasting my life, like I need to change and go the other way. And I repented right then and there because I had a realization God was real. Now, am I saying that is going to happen to you? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm saying if you never throw your seed out on the ground, you'll never get a harvest. If you never throw seeds out, you ain't never going to get nothing. So why not throw as many seeds out as you can so that you can get as much fruit as you can in your life? Welcome to the plug. start off by telling you a story. <laughs> there was a couple. It was in Atlanta, Georgia, about 1245 in the afternoon, and they went to Piedmont Park. And while this couple was at Piedmont Park, the husband, Leo, grabbed out a big, juicy watermelon. He brought it out on a picnic blanket, and he sliced the watermelon open. His wife's eyes lit up with joy like, ooh, I love watermelon. She black. And so <laughs> she said, ooh, I love watermelon. As Leo sliced open the watermelon, he gives one to his wife. He takes a big bite out of the watermelon, and all of a sudden, he gets disgusted. He spits it out of his mouth abruptly. Puh! a seed. He chewed on a watermelon seed, and he did not like it. As he spit the seeds out, he continued his picnic by picking every seed out of the watermelon and no longer chewing them or swallowing them. Threw them onto the grass. But little did he know that about 30 minutes later, ants came, collected the seeds, and used it. That story I think is a good analogy of what we're going to talk about today, guys. Today, we're really going to talk about the importance of a seed. Now, I want to ask you all a question. How many of you all dislike fruits with seeds? Do you like fruits with seeds in it? I don't like fruits in general. You don't? Wow. I like pineapple, but... Okay. That has no seeds in it. Okay. You like fruits with seeds? You get the seedless fruits to avoid the seeds, right? How many of you all in the crowd? Y'all like fruits with seeds? Raise your hand. Fruits with seeds. Like, I go out of my, I go out of my way to get the water, I mean, to get the grapes with the seeds in it. Like, I make sure I don't like the grapes without the seeds, right? I think it's like really ironic, guys, that people get rid of one of the most important parts of the plant. We've been on this series called Rooted. In this series, or routed, however you say it, in this series is all about, you know, you, all about finding the greatness that's on the inside of you and producing it. So, and we're going to talk about that a little more. People usually discard those tiny, small seeds, not realizing how valuable they really are. People discard them because they're inconvenience, you know, like, bro, nobody want to chew on no dog on watermelons that got seeds in it when you can get it without the seeds. Just FYI, if a plant comes or a fruit comes without seeds, God didn't make it. That means it was genetically modified, right? In Genesis 1, Jesus, like God said, every fruit shall have a seed in it. So even like them little oranges, they taste good with no seeds in it. They ain't good for you. God ain't make them. All right. I had some yesterday, though. People often do this with human beings as well. We discard the greatness or the seed that is inside of ourselves and in other people. And I think this is so ironic. How powerful is a seed? Did you all know that watermelon seeds are beneficial? Watermelon seeds are actually really healthy for you, Right? Let me tell you some of the things they do. Did you know that it sharpens your memory if you eat watermelon seeds? Some of you need to do that. 
Some of y'all need to do this one as well. They prevent signs of aging because of high protein. Y'all like, bro, I ain't got no wrinkles, but tell your mama that. Antioxidants, they got oils in them that make your skin look better, healthier, younger. They're loaded with magnesium, potassium, zinc, copper, and this is just a few of the properties that come in a watermelon seed. So next time you're at your family reunion and they bring out the watermelon, just swallow a couple of them seeds, all right? You ain't got to chew them. Just swallow them and you should be good to go. This is a quote that I want you all, you all online audience, you all may not have notes with you, but make sure you all write in notes with us. But as you all in the room, uh, you all have some notes. Look underneath your seats. There's some clipboards. You all should have pens. And this is the first fill in the blank. If you don't understand the value of your seed, you will discard, misuse, or abuse it. If you don't understand the value of the seed, you'll discard, misuse, and abuse it. Wouldn't it be crazy if an apocalypse happened? Can we get another pen up here real quick, if you don't mind? Wouldn't it be crazy if an apocalypse happened? And we weren't able to get any fruit or vegetables or any type of food from the grocery store. And you didn't realize your whole life you've been throwing away seeds that could actually produce tons of food. Wouldn't that be kind of wild? Like, you would be upset with yourself. Like, yo, I had a whole forest full of watermelons that I could have produced, but yet I ain't saved one seed. When you don't understand the value of a seed, yo, you throw out, it's like you throw in, if you don't understand the value of the seed or the value of yourself, you will misuse, abuse, and do things that you shouldn't do with your life. This is why I think people do things like drugs. This is why I think people do things like alcohol. People do things like self-harming because they don't understand the value of their seed. When you understand the value of it, you're going to actually protect it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to do things with it. Now, this is one of the quotes that we're going to say during this entire time. Inside each seed is a forest, just like inside each human being is, anybody can fill in that blank, greatness. And so let's read Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Naya, could you start off with verse 1? Um, And two, and then, Josiah, could you read three after she finished? Yes. Okay, Psalm 1, 1 through 3. What delight comes to the one who follows God's ways? Whoa, wait, say that again. What delight comes to the one who follows God's ways? Wow, that's like bars already. It's saying what a joy it is, what beautiful, what pleasure you'll get when you follow God's ways. Don't that sound like opposite? Don't that sound like that could be opposite? Like, yo, if you follow God's ways, like, you're going to have to make sure you do this right and this right and this right. But God is saying, if you follow my ways, it will be delightful to you. It's going to be joyful to you. It's going to be good for you. My bad, I ain't mean to cut you off. You can, re- you can keep on reading. Keep on reading. He won't walk in step with the wicked. Whoa. Repeat that one more time. All right. I, I'm not going to do that the whole time. Repeat that one more time. He won't walk and step with the wicked. He won't walk or step or she, right? He or she won't walk and step in the wicked. Keep going. Nor share the sinner's way, nor be found sitting in the scorner's seat. So if you see all of these words, follows, ways, walk, step, way, all of these are synonymous with route, going down the proper route, the proper way. And uh, just read verse 2 for me. His pleasure and passion is remaining true to the word of I am, meditating day and night in the true revelation of the light. This is, oh, <laughs> this is good right here. So I don't know if you all know, but at the beginning of the year, something our church does, we do something called Connect 21, where we literally fast, we literally pray, we give up something so that we can give the first fruits of our year to the Lord. So that we can give the beginning of the year to the Lord. So what does that look like if we're fasting? That could look like giving up food. Some of you all need to give up some sweets. Some of you all need to give up some junk food for 21 days. Some of you all need to give up, you know, meat for 21 days. 
Some of y'all like, nah, bro, you, you tripping. I, I can't give up the chicken, dog. Some of you all need to give up, you know, Netflix. Some of you all need to give up your social media. Some of you all need to give up YouTube for 21 days. Give it up. But instead of doing those, spend time. What does it say? Reverse 2 again for me, Naya. His pleasure and passion is remaining true to the word of I am. Remaining true. His passion is remaining true of the word of I am, the word of God. So some of you all need to give that stuff up so that you can spend more time in the word. Some of you all, God isn't real to you yet. But I promise you, if you spend that time, you can have an experience with him that would change. That's what happened to me, straight up, bro. That, I don't know. I told y'all this before probably. But my life changed because of the 21-day fast. My entire life changed. December, New Year's Eve, I, okay, dang, I got to admit that. Okay. <laughs> New Year's Eve, not, not this year. I'm talking about like seven years ago, all right? Eight years ago, right? That December, we went to church first. You know how they be having them watch night services. We went to the early service, though. Like, we wanted to make sure we bring it in in the club, you know, New Year's Eve night. We went to church at the beginning. Some of my homeboys went to church drunk, like literally taking shots on the way up to the church. I'm like, y'all are going too far. Like, I ain't with that. (laughs) I'm not with that. But that night, I went to church being like, yeah, I want to, you know, give some of the year up to the Lord. But really that night, I ended up smoking, drinking, doing things I shouldn't have done, brought the new year in, popping bottles and things of that nature, right? But in January, I decided to do the 21-day fast that the church was talking about. And during that fast, yo, I ain't going to lie, my life changed completely. I, I went real radical because I was at the point in my life where it's like, God, if I believe you real, but if you're not real, then I'm just about to go and do my thing, right? If I'm, I'm about to just live my life however I want to live it. And so I gave up meats, sweets. I gave up all processed foods. This was difficult for me back then. Like I gave up alcohol. I gave up drugs. Some of you all need to give the drugs. Give vaping away for 21 days. Some of you all need to give that stuff away. I gave up the drugs. I gave up sex for 21 days. And that, that was difficult for me at that stage in my Very difficult. <laughs> extremely difficult for me at that stage in my life. But the pastor said, Pastor Gregory actually said, don't focus on what you're doing. Make sure you're focusing on praying and spending time in the Word. And something happened to me over those 21 days that changed my life forever. I had an experience with God in my bedroom alone where literally I felt the presence of God come into my room and it was better than any molly I'd have never popped. It was better than any kush I'd have never smoked. It was better than any sex I'd have never had. And from that day, it was like something changed, bro. Like seriously, something changed in my life. It was like, God is real. If God is real, what am I doing with my life? (laughs) God is real and I'm wasting my life like I need to change and go the other way. And I repented right then and there because I had a realization God was real. Now, am I saying that is going to happen to you? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm saying if you never throw your seed out on the ground, you'll never get a harvest. If you never throw seeds out, you ain't never going to get nothing. So why not throw as many seeds out as you can so that you can get as much fruit as you can in your life? And so I really want to challenge you all, challenge you all. This 21 days, connect 21, and we're going to give you our opportunity to sign up at the end. I want you all to challenge yourself and do this. All right, that was not on the script, but let's keep it moving. Verse 3, if you could read verse 3, Josiah. He he will be standing firm like a flourishing tree planted by God's design, deeply rooted. Deeply what? Rooted. Deeply what? Rooted. Okay. By the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in the season of his delight. He, he is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. He ain't never thirsty. He ain't never a thirst bucket. The PLUG version, or the plug version, pretty much says, the one who stays off the route of the ratchet and in the word consistently will be like a rooted tree. The one who stays off the route of the ratchet and you get in that word consistently, you're going to be like a rooted tree. All right, so I'm going to do just a little recap of what we talked about last week, and then we're going to go a little more in. No matter how tall, how wide a tree is, it all started off 
with a seed. Remember, there are three S's that you need, uh, that a seed needs. There are three S's that a seed needs. The three S's are this. All plants need to undergo diverse, can anybody, seasons, multiple stages, and you need specific substances in order to come alive and thrive. You got to go, you need all of these different things to occur in order to produce what is on the inside of you. You need all of these. So what are the different seasons? Name a season for me. Fall. What's your favorite season? Fall. 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 Yes, your favorite season. What's another one? Spring. Winter. Summer. You need all of those seasons to occur in your life. And sometimes you're going to go through a season of winter where it just don't look good. It ain't no leaves on the trees. It looks naked. It, looks, it, it doesn't look good, but you, you need those seasons. You need spring where everything, where I mean things is just busting out, like you just flourishing and everything. You need all fall where things are dropping out of your life. Like you need all of these seasons to occur. You're going to need some summer seasons where it gets hot. You know, like it gets real hot, especially in Atlanta. So you need seasons, and then you need different substances. All seeds need lawns. All seeds need lawns in order to come alive and thrive. And we have an acronym for lawns. There's an acronym. I thought this was really cool. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I just want to throw this out there. I thought this was fire, right? All seeds need lawns. So L stands for, you know, light. All seeds need light. That's one of the first things. That's your energy. That's your passion. That's your desire. Your connection to the sun, the S-O-N. You need that. You need that. Then what do you need, Naya? You need air. You need air. You can't breathe without air, right? That's words, breath. You got to speak good words and God's word over yourself. Stop speaking negativity over yourself. One of the biggest pet peeves that I have is when people say the word can't. I can't. What? Why would you say you can't? When clearly the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Stop saying you can't. I can't get straight A's. Well, you can't if you say can't. Henry Ford said whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, either way, you're right. So what are the words that you're speaking over yourself? Are you speaking God's word? Don't even, like, even if you feel this way, don't speak it. Speak the opposite. I'm ugly. No, no, I'm not ugly. Boy, I'm handsome. Boy, ooh. Like, even if you feel that way, I'm made in God's image. Speak the opposite. Like, seriously, straight up. Yeah, like, you ugly. You your daddy, son. You need, W is for what? Water. Water. That's wisdom. You got to make good decisions if you want to be successful in life. Like, you got to make good decisions, wise decisions. Then you have God's wisdom, and then you have man's wisdom. Then you need nutrients, which is knowledge, knowledge. You must know something and someone, but knowledge is not power. Knowledge is not power at all. Wisdom, applying knowledge is power. Then you need soil slash space. That's the environment. That is mental and that's your mental environment, like you can't have stinking thinking. You have to have good thinking. Like you have to think positively as well. And then that's also your friendship. What environment? What? If I look at your friends, I'll be able to tell you where you're going in life straight up. You heard that before, right? To let me see your friends and you're going to show me who you really are. If you ain't got no friends that are doing anything good with their life, you may need to get a new group of friends. Straight up, like, you got to get good people around you. And it's like, but, bro, I don't know nobody. <laughs> well, that's why you got to start talking when you come to church. All right? Start talking. Open up your mouth. Say, hey, I see you almost every Sunday. I don't know your name. What is it? See, we got name tags now. You can even <laughs> say their name. And then the last one you need, you need different stages, okay? I'm going to move quickly. You need different stages. First, you need to know if you're a good seed. Then you have to germinate roots. You need the seedling, development, sapling. That's when the roots and stem and all that starts to come. Blossoming, where it goes into flower, and then you got to produce fruit, and that fruit got to ripen, okay? But the most important thing that I want y'all to get 
What does it start with? What does this whole thing start with, Naya? It starts with the seed. It starts with what? It starts with a seed. So you have to know, are you a good seed? Are you a good seed or aren't you? Because if you ain't a good seed, you might as well just get out of here, right? You might as well not even listen if you ain't a good seed. But how do we know if something is a good seed or not? I think it's crazy that this right here, y'all look, that this tree right here, one of the biggest trees in the world, came from that right there. This huge tree came from that. Isn't that mind-blowing? How did that huge tree fit in the inside of that? Is it something I'm missing? Like, how did it stuff all of that on the inside of there? You don't realize what is on the inside of you. You don't realize the greatness that is on the inside. How much greatness is inside of you that ain't being produced yet? Are you still a seed? But we got to know if you're a good seed. We got to know. We got to know. Um... But before any of this, with this big tree, we got to know. So Ecclesiastes 11.6 says this, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. That means like in the morning do your work, but in the evening do more work, right? Like in the morning do your schoolwork, but then you need to do your life work as well. Like me, in the morning, in the morning I do my church work, but then I also do my other work as well. Like, you need, and then this is what the scripture says, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that. Wow, that just, I was doing all this and that thing. I didn't even realize that was part of the scripture. That's crazy. Either this or that, whether they both, man, y'all was supposed to read the scripture. Dang it. My bad. Whether they both shall be alike or good. You don't know what's going to actually prosper in life. You don't know if going this path is or this path is. You don't know if this seed is, that seed. I don't, are, are you a good seed? Or are you a good seed? Hmm, how do we tell? Well, we could do a couple tests, right? We could do some scientific tests just to tell. Um, let's see, let's see. First, you can just look at a seed and tell if it's rotten or not, right? Like, show that picture real quick of a rotten seed. You can just look. You can tell which ones are bad seeds and which ones are good, right? You can tell. You can just look at somebody. Can you just look at somebody and tell if they're a bad seed, though? Just like looking out in the crowd like, ooh, some of y'all, ooh, I don't know if you, some of y'all hair not done, some of y'all ain't brushing, ooh, you may not be a good seed, right? We can't tell just off of looking at something, though. So that, that fails. You can do the water test, right? And the water test is where you drop seeds in the water, you can play, you drop seeds in the water, and the ones that float have nothing in them. And the ones that go down to the bottom are good seeds. But this seed is a fail as well, because sometimes the seeds at the top can still produce. So let's say we look at the seed and we pick a good one, we do the float test, and it's a good one. Will that seed still produce? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> will, it, will it be, will it produce? You do the look test, you do the water test. Will it still produce? I would hope so. You would hope so. Okay, what you think? I mean, I just uh, I think it depends on what you do with it. Like. Ooh. <laughs> he didn't even say the full answer, but that was just good right there. It depends what you do with it. What you mean? Oh, the lawns. Ah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, cool. Even if you do all those, you can still have the right lawn, air, water, nutrients, all of that stuff. But if the seed ain't good, it really don't matter. Did you all know how many, take a guess, take a guess, take a guess. How many acorns are produced on a mature oak tree? How many acorns do you think a mature oak tree produces? Go first. Uh, Twelve. Twelve acorns? Yeah. All right, 12 of them. 20. 20. 12 and 20. If we multiply yours together, you would still be wrong. You would still be wrong. Uh, (laughs) 10,000 seeds. 
a mature oak tree will produce. 10,000. Now, check this out. How many of these oak trees, seeds, will produce a tree? How many of the seeds out of the 10,000 will produce a tree? You can go first this time. <laughs> I'm not good at these guessing games. Um, I'm going to go with one. One. One out of 10,000? I'm sticking with my answer. Don't, don't try to change my mind. Okay, my bad. I like it. You're going to stick to it. All of them, 10,000. So we got, we got the complete opposite. <laughs> we got one in all of them. Drum roll, please. One. <laughs> Only one out of 10,000 will produce, bro. <laughs> that was that guy from that video that got, ah, he was looking red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was looking bad, bro. He was looking bad. Only one. That is low numbers right there. So even if all of these seeds, we, are we saying only one of y'all are going to be a good one? That's real depressing, right? I'm not meaning to depress nobody. I'm just trying to spit facts. Okay? I just wanted her. She was right, but I just wanted to, you know, see if she would stick to it. Out of those seeds, some will never get planted in the right soil. Some of them are going to get eaten by squirrels, worms, birds. Like, they're just going to die, and only one will produce. Some are going to just get run over by lawnmowers. Like, only one is going to make it. It's vital to understand that you are a good seed. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm a good seed. I'm, I'm a good seed. You're a good seed. You're, you're a good seed. Yeah, y'all are good seeds. So, only one out of 10,000, though. Are we lying or are we telling the truth to each other? Like, I, I hope I'm a good seed. Well, let's find out. Now, no matter how your parents birthed you, it doesn't matter if you came from a single family. If, you're, if you came on accident, I was an accident. I was an accident. My, my parents didn't mean to have me like when they had me, right? Like they didn't plan for me to come, right? No matter if you were on purpose, if you were an accident, if you come from a single parent home, if you come from a two parent home, if, you, if, you're, if your mother was raped, it doesn't matter how you were born. You heard of something called wedlock before, right? Out of wedlock, it doesn't matter if you were born under the lock, beside the lock, on top of the lock, it does not matter. There was something that occurred that will let you know that you are a good seed. It is not about how you were born in the world, but rather how in the world to birth what's inside of you. It doesn't matter how you were born in the world. Some of you all, your parents ain't playing for you at all, straight up. Like they ain't, yeah, they ain't want you here at the time that they had you. They, my parents did not want, I did not want my son at the time that we had him. I'm so glad he's here. But we wasn't planning on that, was we? What? You were? You tricked me? You tricked me? You tricked me. All right. We got to talk in the car. <laughs> we didn't plan for him to come. We love him. We want him now. We ain't planned for him. Well, she did. I, I didn't. I'm going to just. <laughs> Not when we had a plan, babe, five years of marriage. <laughs> Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says this, for you were, fo oh, actually, can you read this one? Psalms 139, 13. Oh, oh, just look at the screen. For you formed my inward pants, oh wait, parts? Parts. Yes. Oh. Keep on. I will praise for you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Marvelous, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Go to 17. We'll read that one. Oh, Naya. Read that part. 
How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How precious what? Are your thoughts to me. Ooh, God's thoughts about you are precious. Have you ever thought about that before? Like some of us think that God is disgusted with us. And he's saying like, no, actually my thoughts about you are precious. I love you. I care about you. You remember the song that we were singing earlier? Like, <laughs> he loved you. All right, keep on going. How great is the sum of them? Yep. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. God has more good thoughts about you than all the sand on the shore, on the seashore. That's a lot of good thoughts. And if he thinks good about you, maybe we should think good about ourselves. I mean, we could just take a scoop. We could just take a shovel full and we could live off of those good thoughts, right? But he has all the sand on the seashore he thinks of those good thoughts. Now, every single human life at one time was a seed. And you all may not remember this. Um, smaller than the eye could even see, you all may not remember what happened, but I'm going to give you uh, the story of what happened to you. There were about 250,000 sperm cells that were there. And this is like us in human life. You all didn't remember, but it was a fight that was going on. You all had to fight. You all were running and there was millions of y'all little guys swimming everywhere. You all didn't realize that in the first 30 minutes of that ejaculation, 99% of the sperm died. That means if there was 200 million of them, only 2 million, only 200,000 survived. And you were in that 200,000. You all didn't realize that there's something called leukocytes that come to kill the, each sperm that still is living. And these leukocytes come and they come to destroy. But you all made it through that and you all swam all the way to that egg. And you made it to the egg. And some of y'all don't even know how to swim right now. <laughs> but you made it. Can anybody give me the answer? How did you do it? How did, how did you do it, bro? How did you beat 250 million other sperms? This is absolutely correct. It was only God. You don't even remember. <laughs> we don't realize that you were already a good seed. You were the best of the best. Out of 250 million, you made it out alive. And then you spent nine whole months in that dark womb and you squeezed your fat head and sprouted out of, out of your mom, and a baby came, and it was you. You all don't realize the miracle of you being alive right now. You all don't realize that a seed that was invisible now made a five-foot, two, uh, middle school or, or seniors in here today. That's amazing. You are a good seed already, and you have to recognize that you have the potential to be great. You have it on the inside of you. Now, let's keep on going. But that's just the surface level of greatness. That's just the, that's the very beginning. That's only the very beginning. Because the sad part is that you were born with a disease. We were all born and you made it out alive. Good job. But then you were born with this disease. It was a defect. And this defect is called sin. And this sin defect has affected every single seed that has been born from Adam. Every human being that came after Adam has had this disease because Adam ate from the tree. And when he ate, his DNA changed, and everybody after him has been changed. You know, like that natural part of you that is just really easy to lie that natural side of you that's really easy to steal, that, that side that not just easy to steal, but you want to. Like that side of you that just wants to do wrong, like nobody taught you that. It was natural for you, right? It was very natural for you. 
It was like, you're a good seed, but you got mold on top of your seed, right? And it's almost like this picture right here. A lot of the seeds came out, but some seeds got mold on them. But the problem is, how do we get the mold off of you? Now, the crazy part is some plants are still able to do great things in life with the mold on them, but they'll never reach their full potential. Some human beings have done great things without being cleansed by Jesus Christ. However, they never reach their full potential. What would somebody like, who's, who's one of the worst people I can think of? Somebody like Hitler. Think if Hitler was able to be cleansed and born again and use that same strategy to win people over for greatness. The world would be totally different. Instead of killing all of those Jews, maybe he would have saved millions of lives, right? Well, what he did wasn't great, though, but it was negative, but he did. It was great in his eyes, right? But the thing is, just because there's mold on top of the seed doesn't mean it's a bad seed. Doesn't mean that it's a horrible seed because you can get cleansed off. How would you clean off mold from a seed? If you had to guess, how would you do it? I thought like you could like pour some water on it. Water? Just water? Nah, <laughs> water ain't going to clean it off. Water ain't going to clean it off. You got to like burn it off? Burn it off. Ooh, that would be tough. That, that is a good, that, I like that though. Can you even like remove it? Can you remove it? You got to use hydrogen peroxide. You need a cleaning agent. And the cleaning agent that we have is the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what will cleanse you, purify you, get that mold off of you so that you can be made whole. But once Yeshua cleanses you and makes you new, it is like another miracle occurs. You are no longer just, if you were an apple seed that had mold on it, bro, you are no longer just an apple seed without mold on it. It's like if we planted you, a miracle, I, I couldn't find a good analogy for it, but it's almost like you would no longer be an apple seed, you would become an avocado seed. You would become an entire different seed. An entire, once Christ saves you and you're born again, you become an entire different human being. You become, brand, the scripture says you become brand new. What does brand new mean? That doesn't mean one pencil and then you keep on producing pencils. No, you are now, a, you, God produces a marker. You've been marked by God. You've been highlighted by him. You've been a whole different human being. And so we got to realize once you're born again, God cleanses you up. You baptize full of the Holy Spirit. God changes you out completely. It's like magic. It's just like magic. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that video. We ain't got a lot of time. First Peter 1 says this, 123. It says, who wants to read? Who wants to read? You can read for me. Yeah. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but in, of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. It said that you were once perishable, dying, death, but now since you've been born again, imperishable, living, you cannot die. You cannot die. Well, you're going to die one day, ain't you, bruh? No. Actually, no. Somebody comes in here right now, shoots me. I'm never going to die. I'm going to be with Jesus. And then after some time, he's going to make a new earth and he's going to send me back down. I'm never going to die. Imperishable. So that is why Jesus says, I mean, Paul says, death, where is your sting? Death, what? The biggest thing that people fear is death. And when you don't fear death anymore... What, what happens? <laughs> You're invincible. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You ain't got nothing to fear. What do you care about somebody making fun of you if you don't fear death anymore? 
What do you care about praying over your food in the lunchroom if you ain't even going to die, if you, know, if you don't fear death? What, what, what are you scared to tell your friend that Jesus loves you? Can I pray for you about something? If, you ain't, if death can't scare us, hmm, maybe because we don't understand that you're never really going to die after you've born again. Some people will, you know, those that aren't saved. But me, he ain't never going to die. You're a good seed when you are God's seed. You're a good seed when you're a God seed. And that's why this whole series, which will continue, is just all about when you root into God, God will show you your route. When you root into him, he's going to show you your route. He's going to show you the way. He's going to show you what you need to do in life, but you must first take root. And all of us in here have the potential to be not just good seeds, but great seeds. But there's some things that we must do. Some of us in this room, we like, it's the beginning of the year, straight up. Some of you all did some things in 2020 that you just need to put away, right? You need to discard some, the good and the bad. You need to, that was 2020. 2021, it ain't no new me type of thing. New year, new me. I ain't with none of that type of stuff, right? It's the same you. You just need a different mindset. Same you, unless you get born again. Then it's going to be a new you. Then it's a different you. But until then, you need a new mindset. What is going to make 2021 different for you? <laughs> I can tell you something right now. Rooting in the God will change your year drastically. I dare you all to really give God the best 21 days that you can and see what he'll do with it. I dare you to really give God your best for this 21 and see what he'll do with it. If God can take dirt and make a human being, and if you that are dirt give something to him, what is he going to make from that? He's going to be able to make something beautiful. But some of us really need to dig in deep for this 21 days. Some of us have been dealing with a lot in 2020. You done disconnected straight up. You done unplugged. We ain't had church and you like, hey man, I'm disconnect. But some of us need to plug back in. And it would be a great thing to plug back in during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Give your first to the Lord. But some of us need to give our life first. 